But then next we have what's called the Cloud Forest. It's another indoor piece filled with foliage surrounding one other giant man-made waterfall structure just covered in greenery. You can view all the flowers and plants down below. You can go way up high if you're not afraid of heights in there. I mean, at least it's better than like the 50 stories up of public housing with very little railing, that's for sure. Partially, it was like Jurassic slash dinosaur themed as well. There's a section called like The Lost World. Partially inside of it, actually there are some like cave stalactites and stalagmite displays. There's a bit about climate change and staying green, appropriate. And now that we are exiting the cloud forest, it is time for the most noteworthy part of this. That would be the super trees. What makes them so super? Well, they light up. 
They don't just light up, they give you a show. A musical light up show at like, I want to say 8 or 9 p.m. I can't show you the full thing, otherwise, I don't know, they might copyright strike that. Plus, I want to give you something to look forward to. I just feel like it would be better to show you selected clips rather than the full show. I feel like that would be a little bit boring and a little bit long. And these videos are long enough, let me assure you. So, take the abridged version for now. If you want to see more, I'm sure it's up on YouTube. Okay, so grab the cameras and enjoy the show. After that, we get a glimpse of what is known as the Marina Bay Hotel. It is a boat-shaped thing on top of three little towers. And yes, it is a hotel. It's a very fancy hotel thing. And it looks so cool. Usually you've heard me gush about like ancient things that looked cool. This is a modern thing that looks cool. Finally, you know? It isn't just a giant rectangular skyscraper. It's like a, a couple of skyscraper hotel things together with some flair. We never really went inside of it, but there was a path into like a, a shopping mall area nearby, which we did go inside. Interesting. Man, 
Yeah, he, he's much more popular in Asia than in the West, I think. For some reason, the Louis Vuitton stall is there. They have a stall here. To get there, you need to go through here and go through an underground tunnel. Mm -hmm. It's not that empty. You just can't really see it from outside, I guess. And, yeah, it, it's, uh, outside. and then we head back outside of the shopping mall to another little show. It is like a 15 minute spectacular of dancing, water, streams, and lights, and music, and all of that. Again, I'll sh only show you some selected clips from it. The best bits, I would say. If you want to see the full thing, look it up on YouTube. Again, after this, that'll wrap up day two. And uh, here's your little treat. And that just leaves us with day three, the last day. Again, shout out to Snares and Halud for showing me around Singapore. They wouldn't really be able to hang out with me that day, which means I had to find an alternative thing to do. Like at this point, checking the metadata on this footage, I think like day three was like a Tuesday. It's kind of a hard day to take off if you have like work or whatever. Even though they couldn't show up for this day and the day I had to head over to the airport. I do appreciate that they did hang out with me, spend some time, show me what Singapore is really like, all that good stuff. But you know what this means? 
It's time to go to the zoo. I'm sorry, I like the zoo. You, even if it's like a crappy zoo, it's fun to go to a zoo. Why not? You got exotic animals. You got drinks and food. You got places to stand around, walk around, and sit down. Some of these places are indoors and cooled off. I literally see no downside to any of this. I take the MRT to one spot on the map, and then I have to wait for a bus, and then take that bus all the way to the zoo. Kind of an interesting system, but okay. Now there was our options for lunch. I could have KOC, or I could have actual food from Singapore or Malaysia. And I stuck with the Singaporean Malaysian food, the one you might associate with Singapore, which is laksa. It's a spicy little noodle soup, and it's popular in Southeast Asia. It's got like thick wheat noodles, you could have it with chicken or fish, or I guess you could have it vegetarian. It seems like something they would do. But the important part is that spicy soup or like a spicy curry kind of a stuff. So I totally recommend it if you head over to any part of Southeast Asia. Just find a spot that has laksa and you will be amazed. Anyway, I'm going to do something similar to my vlog in Shanghai and just kind of commentate over the animal footage that I shot. I shot the animals with my video camera and a little bit of with my cell phone. So enjoy that. Welcome everyone to the Singapore Zoo. First thing we'll examine are these delightful, colorful fish in a pond. They come in a variety of colors, actually. Here is a look at the area around the entrance. This is in different sections. The first part that you will be seeing is the river safari. You're going to see a lot of river-based animals coming up. So we don't immediately start around the water, but coming up to one of these buildings, we will be seeing those more aquatic beings. For now, let's look at this great scenery, these amazing little patches of foliage. Palm oil is bad. First, let's head over to the Amazon. Starting off, we have these critters here. Here's some more fish just swimming around, minding their own business. There's a manatee down below. There's multiple manatees around at this uh, in this section actually. So this section doesn't just have views from above. Just like any good aquarium or zoo, they have views to look inside the water itself. Double plated to make sure that any water or creatures don't uh, try to break it through and try to munch on the humans. And right here is a big curved grand view starting from the bottom. So we also have some piranha fish as well. A lot of people think that piranha fish are like inherently dangerous, but they're about as dangerous as sharks in that they only really go after things that are already smelling like blood and food. Here are some manatees munching, having lunch. And here's another big grand view with plenty more fish to see.
there's a section where it's like you can view the water from above but then below it there's like a glass section and you will not walk under it that's that's pretty cool here's an otter shout out to the otters that's one of the the signature animals of singapore actually They like to call manatees mermaids. That seems to be a thing. Here's more otters just on land. Seems to be rub along a log time of day. Wish I could do that. And they give all sorts of good information about why biodiversity is good why we should save the Amazon River, because otherwise they would not have any animals to keep them in business. And we wouldn't want that. So now we're back on land. Here are some other rivers you can look at. There are more spots with fish and other aquatic animals that are not just located around the river area. Here are some rock star looking birds right here. They really stole the show. They, they almost look coordinated, that's, that's crazy. Not with their hairstyles, but with their like head movements. I don't know what this bird is, but it's uh, pretty interesting. That's just a parrot. Imagine if you were just a fish. No work, no students to teach, no bills to pay, no um, crippling capitalism. Just, just swim around and hope you don't die. Life as a fish seems pretty cool. Well, aside from the amount of predators that want to eat you, but you can just swim around that. And now here comes the good old American section of the Mississippi River right here in Singapore. I just feel right at home. Somewhere in this house is a salamander. There are critters in this house. Here's some beavers. I must go into Bucky's. Bucky's has a mascot animal that's a beaver. Good old Bucky. So there's a problem when there's too much algae, I guess, in the water. That's always good to know. And here we can see our snapping turtles. Our deadly, deadly turtles that actually eat the fish. Probably not these fish. These are just regular fish hanging out. Look at that, just the inspiration for King Koopa. There's alligator in the name, but it's actually a fish, did you know? It was a very windy day as well. Not that you would know if you were a fish, but you could probably hear it in the audio. So here are some more common fishies that get munched on by turtles. Yeah, they look all cute and stuff until they bite down on little Nemo. They're just going crazy, just tearing apart this one fish. <laughs> wow. This is sure these are not the fish that they want to keep on display. Oh, also, here's a big dinosaur right here. Here's a zookeeper. He's not part of the, the lineup of animals. Oh, there's me. Yep, there he is. At this point, I think I had to switch to my smartphone because my camera battery died. This is why you keep extra batteries, and uh, please just be able to afford extra camera batteries, even if they're periphery. See, the fish that they care about 
they don't feed that to the turtles, like the African arowana. Or this sharp tooth thingy. It might have something to do with being part of the Malaysian Peninsula, but even outside of the zoo, and inside of the zoo, it feels very much like a jungle in Singapore. You wouldn't really know it if you were inside the more urban areas of Singapore, which is 90% of Singapore, but like, it's pretty much jungle outside of that. Save the animals. Now we're on to the Ganges. So the main theme of this zoo is a whole bunch of important rivers around the world. So this is what that river safari section is all about. Gotta show all the animals for people to see and make them feel a little bit about the life that is outside of their city. You know, it's surprising. People get very scared of, like, gators and crocs, even when they're behind the glass of the zoo. Like, they're not gonna jump out. They don't care that much. Right here is the section where you can touch animals. Give it a special touch. This one's the horseshoe crabs. It's only a couple of people at a time. And they show people exactly how to touch the animals. You gotta wash your hands first. And then just kind of gently go in there. So let's start with a starfish. Or a horseshoe crab. Does this count as kinesthetic learning? See, these things are just looking for food. They're not looking for fingers or pets. Here's something special coming up. Ah, the Mekong River. Where you can see some monkeys coming up. Those aren't the monkeys, those are more fish. There's the monkeys. Why aren't there more monkey furries? Just, just seems like an interesting choice, you know? Is it just the stereotype that they're all crazy and zany and, and selfish and throw poop? Because, like, you also got the Monkey King. I'm pretty sure the Monkey King is a good, uh, good characterization for the monkey. That's a big fish. I'm inclined to say that, for the most part, I was given the impression that half of this was basically in an aquarium, which is different from most zoos, where there's a lot more outdoor stuff. A lot more land animals and stuff. Not like manta rays and catfish. Not that that's a bad thing, I think it's a decent change of pace. I like the fact that some kids try to like wave at the fish and they think the fish flapping their little flippers is like waving back and they're like ah, it's waving at me kids are dumb all right here's some more land animals actually but it looks like this one prefers to eat the fishy kind just look at that beak it's pretty much made for just dipping into the water like like chopsticks just snatching up food Here's a naughty little underside. This guy was posing for the camera for some reason. Now it's on to the Yangtze. Including this species of alligator. See, it's taking a nap right now. Does, do, do the kids think that they can just lure the... the 
turtles by pretending their fingers are worms? Or do they just like pointing at things? Come back, Croc. You are a good game. So that's a giant salamander right there. You don't hear a lot about salamander furries either. What's, what's the deal with that? And they have a whole big section for pandas coming up. They make sure to litter the place with all sorts of fish and river life before really showing off the big guns somewhere right in the middle. Like the sturgeon. See, I told you they had pandas. There's more coming up soon. I don't remember in any of this footage if we do actually get to see the pandas in action. Oh, and this one had the correct title of just Red Panda instead of Lesser Panda. That was the Twitter. You can kind of see it in, the, in its little nest. So they even named their giant pandas. One of them is Kai Kai. There it is. There's the Kai Kai. They made sure to really hype up these different ones, Kai Kai and Cha Cha. And it just kind of does what pandas do best. Did you expect a baby to make baby noises? I didn't. I guess they like to sing, too. So apparently if the female panda thinks it's pregnant, then they just kind of hide it from public view. I don't know. I think Jaja is missing in action. But at least we saw one or two. Here's a nice calm river. And it just so happens that a monkey has escaped from its enclosure and is just kind of climbing around, confused as ever as to why so many people are pointing their little eye machines at it. Not like eye machines like iPhone, as in like a machine that has an, like an eye. Basically the aperture of the camera looks like an eyeball to, to animals. There he goes. Observe the monkeys in action. Oh, we just did. Isn't that great? So here's the actual river section, not just looking at animals. You can mosey along the river on a quest. You don't really get to see any animals on this quest, on the boat and all that. But it is a, it is a nice calming ride. I'm probably not going to commentate on it too much. We'll just kind of relax right into it. I believe it's free, too. I don't remember paying anything to get on the boat. Hi, right, Brian. Very good afternoon. Welcome about Reservoir Cruise.
survey show with different animals. Here's some highlights. Yeah. Come on, there's so many of you, one more time! Yeah! Yeah, that's the way! Let me finish this. Okay, let's go back. Hop, 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 all the way back. Oh, very nice, Bam, and great job for our three of your volunteers. Everyone's right over here. Did you have something for Tata? I've got two plastic bottles from Low. We just now start to help me recycle these bottles. Come on. Into the bin. Very nice. Inside, inside, inside. Oh, 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 Very nice, Tucker. Okay, one more bottle. How about more encouragement for Tucker, everyone? Come on. This is me. Let's go, Tucker. Very nice. Come on, inside. Very nice, Tucker. Um, I thought I put it in the bushes over here, but I can't quite remember what I was doing just before the show. It's not there right now. Can you help me check in the bushes downstage? Well, you can do it first. Snake and show it to everyone, okay? Shit! It's just a rubber snake, relax. Does anyone know if snake swim? Does snake swim? Does snake swim? Yes! So no, yes, yes. So right, it's a faster and easier way for them to also escape from their predator. Great white pelicans and blue is our goal green for wildlife and better than that explain the blue man and my right. Yes, how did I listen to you? Back of this is favorite and that is a message for all of us to start reusing shopping bags when we do go shopping instead of using single-use plastic bags. Instead of always taking away from the forest, we should give back. Oh, that is a great message. I've been speaking out for three hours. I want to introduce the rodents joining us right now. Alright, coming right up is the world largest rodents all the way from the Amazon. Alright, let's welcome the giant Kakibara brothers named Mo and Tina. The rodents in North America are our beavers. Now we do have a couple joining us here. The female girl is by the name of Selena and her boyfriend by Justin Bieber. <laughs> now with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And I do hope you all have a great day ahead. So I hope you enjoyed that. Here is a little bit more of the zoo. Hold on, can you watch the screen for me real quick? I need to turn off my air conditioning. One second. That's better. Did I miss anything? I won't know until I go back into editing. But there are some monkeys. It's always nice when there's little short rides that are available and attractions inside of a zoo. See, this one was a boat ride with lots of information about the different animals. Whether the animals were there to be seen or not. Hiding among the grass is the Amazon's tallest huh? canine. You also might get splashed. Are you ready? We're about to come face to face with the most feared predator in the Amazon, the Jaguar. Meet Shao, our young Jaguar. He was born in the Singapore Zoo in 2004. It's always nice to have attractions at the zoo. It's pretty much a big selling point if you can just sit down and let people show you the animals rather than you having to 
walk around yourself. Stop the collision flamingos. The flamingos have to Maybe a mix of both, just to give you a little bit of exercise and a little bit of comfort. Just the right mix. They have special trees and fruits here too. Here's a bit more about the Amazon River and some more otters. Star of the show. And there he goes. Here's a long one. Here's a big long thing. It's a shocking long animal. Did you know this? Animal was named after an MGMT song. Coming up, we'll hear a little bit more about the evening show, which is the night safari. So enjoy some more shots of fish, and I will see you then in the next part. After spending the day at the zoo, it was time to get some dinner. Um, unfortunately then, I had to get KFC. Business as usual. It's like self-fulfilling. I, I at least got some Chong beer. Uh, yeah, I was just openly having the beer after dinner waiting for the next event of the zoo, which was the night safari. is pretty cool. I could barely film any of it just because my video camera, the battery was dead, my smartphone that I had was really bad at low light settings. You'll just have to take my word for it as I salvage as much as I can to make this night safari look like, you know, something really, really cool. Although if I could grant about one thing, there was one tourist. Maybe English was not her first language, but uh, they explicitly tell people on the safari ride not to use flash photography. You'll spook out of the animals. It is very bad. And she kept using flash photography on the animals. And they didn't get spooked, but they it, they, it probably made them feel uncomfortable. And the person on the intercom kept telling people, not specifically, hey, just to remind you, everyone, <clears throat> no flash photography, okay? And it just kept getting more annoyed and indirect the more times this poor, poor person had to remind this woman, Jesus Christ, turn off your fucking flash. <laughs> I think if she eventually turned it off and it was like, okay, back on track. Business as usual. 
From the Rocky Hills, we've gone to the marshlands. Here, you'll see a flock of orange-pink greater flamingos, the tallest flamingo species. They can grow to a height of five feet or one and a half meters. Female lions in the wild do the hunting. Then they wait impatiently for leftovers while the male eats his fill. If the pride has already eaten, they may be lounging or sleeping. A legend tells of Prince Sonila Utama, who named this city Singapore, or Lion City, because he saw a lion when he first landed on the island. So basically, after the night safari, that was Singapore. I don't know if I would recommend Singapore over something like Thailand or Bali, just because Thailand and Bali and other places in Southeast Asia, East Asia as well, they kind of strip away that sort of modern element and urban centers kind of a thing. I mean, it's a fine place to go to if you like shopping, and if you like the urban settings and the big city skyscrapers, and if you want like a big clash of multiple cultures, clash in a good way, by the way. Um, and I'm guessing there are like museums and hot spots that are, you know, regional to Singapore. There you can learn a little bit of history, there you can see a little bit into the past, but Singapore is basically kind of like a, it's a big city. It's just a big old city that you can explore all on your own or with friends and it has all the elements of a good time in a big city but sometimes you don't want that big city all the time. Sometimes you just want to escape to a beach. You want to escape to some ruins. You want to escape to the forest, some, some scenery. I think that's why we avoided so many of the shopping malls and the more urban spots in Singapore. I did love it though. Um, it's just not exactly what I would think of when I think of traveling to Asia with a fursuit. And that was Singapore. Thanks for watching this episode of Fursuiting Across Asia. You can find links down below to playlists like for these kinds of videos, my vlogs, either China and South Korea and other places, and also more episodes of the series Fursuiting Across Asia. Also in the description below, you will see my social media links. That will be my Telegram, my Twitter, and my Instagram. You will also find my TikTok handle down there. It's the same as my Instagram. Just in case you want to watch a couple of short, silly little videos from me. You will also see my Discord screen name and a link to my Discord server. This is for all people to join that like furry content. You can talk to other fans of this channel. You can talk about your favorite movies or music or cartoons. You can share memes. You can do anything you want. You will also see a link to my Patreon. For at least $1 every month, just $1, you will have access to early viewings of my videos. That will be either the day or the night before. That's all my reviews, my vlogs, any kind of video that you see on my channel. There's also the option on Patreon to sponsor a video every month. If you are an artist or a small business, you can use my videos to advertise anything you want, any projects that you're working on, any causes that you need people to see. Again, that's all in the description below, my social media, my Discord server, and my Patreon. You can give a thumbs up if you like the video, a thumbs down if you dislike the video, I won't be offended. And you can also hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you want to watch more videos from my channel. Though you might want to watch a couple more videos before committing to that. Now the next destination will be the final stop for this first shooting across Asia series. I don't know when it's going to be released. I'll work on it as soon as I can. It'll probably be in the fall. It's a very unique spot on the world. It is the island of Bali in Indonesia. So look forward to that. This has been Lightning Runner as Burger the Bull, and I will see you in the next episode. I'll see you then.